So YouTube is changing the ad partner program for smaller creators with under 1,000 subs and under 4,000 hours of watch time in the last year. I wanna talk about that. I wanted to do a bit of a different type of video here for the channel today. I know that this is not our regular type of content. We are very much a tech channel. Uh, we're very much high energy, but I wanted to bring in a little bit of real talk for those who are getting affected by this change, those who are wondering what is even going on. Uh, I think that I can maybe provide a little perspective for those of you who might be wondering about all of what YouTube is trying to do here and to give you a little bit of insight into what we've done on the channel and how how this would have affected us, you know, a year and a half ago when we were in your shoes, when we didn't even have a thousand subscribers and we hadn't hit these marks to get monetized. I really think that this change to the partner program doesn't affect creators. Now let me let me explain what I mean by that. I think this affects YouTubers, people who want to make it big on YouTube, the kids who are starting out, the, the adults who are starting out, everybody who is making a YouTube channel thinking that they're going to make money, thinking that they're going to be like the YouTuber that they look up to, that they idolize, thinking that they can be the next Linus Tech Tips, the next PewDiePie, the next Markiplier, the next whoever, the next Logan Paul even. When, when that is your motivation behind YouTube, this sucks. This hurts you the most because, ah, oh, I can't be like who I idolize when I can't make money like they do. That sucks. The honest reality is that this does not affect content creators. Content creators are people who make videos because they want to. When you think that your voice, your perspective, your ideas are worth something and worth putting out there, getting paid doesn't really matter as much. I think the start of UFD Check is really important here. I started making videos because I hated how much time I was wasting. I was watching Linus Tech Tips, I was watching Paul's Hardware, Awesome Sauce Network, Jay's Two Cents, all of the big names. I was looking at them and I was like, wow, this is awesome. I live vicariously through them. I can't believe that they get all of this awesome hardware. I wish I could be there one day. And then it just occurred to me, you're never going to achieve anything if you're just watching other people. You're never going to become like the people that you look up to if you just keep looking up. You have to look down and start digging in the dirt to actually get something done. This is what I said to myself, Brett, you're wasting your time, either stop watching them or start making content yourself. And that's what happened in my brain, that's what clicked, that's why we uploaded our first video of me building in a mini ITX case because I was sick and tired of wasting my life watching other people's content. The reason I did a build in the mini ITX case was I saw that there were no build guides on YouTube for it. So I thought my experience, my ideas, my video could bring something to to people that didn't exist already. And that's why I started making videos. And that is still the motivation today. I am not making videos for the sake of making money. I am making videos because I want to add something to the world. I want to produce tech videos that are actually helpful. So the start of the channel was completely focused around providing content that people could consume. When I started, the videos were trash, they, they weren't very good, the audio was terrible, the lighting was terrible, everything that is practically good about good videos, we did not have. But I felt like that could be pushed to the side for the sake of the content. The content was what was important to me. What I could communicate through a video was what was important to me. That was what I was bringing to the table to YouTube. That's still my motivation and if I didn't make a cent off of any of those videos, it wouldn't matter to me. I didn't make that first video because I wanted to get paid. I made that first video because I thought it added something to the community. And when I see small creators getting upset with YouTube for removing their AdSense, there, there's two sides of it. I, I absolutely sympathize. I know money is a motivator. I know it sucks that you can't get paid for your work, but at the same time, why are you making videos? I think this will help separate the wheat from the chaff, the people who are making videos to make a name for themselves and people who are making videos to actually provide something to everybody else. Those who are actually contributing, those who are not looking up in the sky saying, I wanna be like that, but those who are in the dirt actually digging, actually trying to set a foundation to build something upon. Because when you're, when you're digging a foundation, it's dirty, it's messy, 
you're pulling up crap all of the time, you're throwing it everywhere, it gets disorganized, but why are you doing it? Because you know what you're going to be building. You know that you're putting something down, you're laying a foundation, you're actually putting down cement, leveling it off, you're putting in the effort and the work to create something long-term. You're not doing it so that you can reach the sky, you're doing it so that you can build something that will withstand the test of time. Because when you build a house without a foundation, it comes crumbling down at the first sign of trouble. I stayed up every night until 2 a.m. for 18 months because I was certain of what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to build a check channel that could one, actually help people out there, and then two, brought in a team of people that I could help realize their potential. I didn't start UFD Tech as a way for me to make a lot of money. I started it because I believed in the fact that I have a unique voice. I view things from a different perspective than most people. I personally think, this might be a little uh, self-righteous, but I think I'm an anomaly. I don't think I live a normal life. I don't think anything. I'm an American living in South Africa who came because I work at a church. That's what I do for my job. I work at a church. I came to work at a church in South Africa and then I started a tech channel. How does that make any sense? I don't know. It doesn't. But I became South Africa's largest tech channel through that. Why? I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense to me. But that's how I've always lived my life. I do things that don't make sense. I got married when I was still in university when I was 19. I married the love of my life. We are still married to this day. We had our first child when we were still in university. I was going to school full time. I was working part time. I had a wife. I had a kid. And I made it work. Most people aren't doing that with their lives. And I'm not saying this as a means to brag. I'm just letting you... This is, this is part of my story. And that's what I think... I want to communicate with this video is that the story of growing a channel is so much more than the subscribers and the views and the money that comes through it, but it's about what you're building, the journey that you go on, and how you accomplish it, how you get there. And that's why the first thing I did when we had enough money saved up for the channel was get somebody to help me. I got Tank to come in and help me review things. Then, as things continued to grow, because I invested in other people who are not myself, we got Reese. Reese, who does amazing video work. And then, as things continued to grow, we picked up Rickus. You can't see him yet, but we have an editor now. Because things are going to continue to grow. They've been growing. Because it's never been about the money. It's been about the journey that I want to take this channel on. I want to provide content that's relevant, and I want to create a team of people who are empowered to fulfill what they think they're good at and what they want to do with their life. But if they didn't fit the team model, if they didn't fit with, is this job ultimately going to be fulfilling for you? Is this something you want to do long term? Are you willing to invest in this? If that wasn't part of the criteria, they weren't on the team. Because it's not about the money. It's not about having the best. It's about creating content that is important. And that's why I think that this YouTube partner program doesn't affect creators. The people who are making videos for a purpose, the people who feel like they have something to provide to the world. And those are the people who, if they keep going, if they keep improving, if they keep learning how to express themselves on video, will eventually meet those requirements. And that's why I wanna dedicate some of this video to, to actually giving airtime to people in South Africa who I think are actually creating content, who are doing a good job, and I wanna give them a shout out for whatever it's worth, for whoever's watching. If you want to go and view their, their channels and see their content and give them a subscribe, you absolutely can. So here are South African creators that I respect that you should check out their channel because they do provide fresh, interesting perspectives. They are actually content creators who aren't doing it for the money, who I think are actually doing it for the right reasons. So first, would be uh, Pac-Man10154 TV. He's a streamer, he does a really good job. Then we have V for Voter. He does tech and gaming stuff as well as streaming. Then there is Axe Streams. He is a CSGO commentator who provides a fresh and interesting perspective on the local South African esports scene. Then we have Shani ZA who is a gaming YouTuber who 
I think really has come into her stride in the last few months, and I'm excited to see where she takes it in 2018. Then we have Tech Girl, who has been crushing the South African tech scene for a very long time, uh, but spent a lot of time developing her YouTube channel last year, so I'm excited to see where she takes things this year. Obviously, that isn't an exhaustive list. There are other plenty of South African creators who I probably haven't heard of. Those are just the ones that I've interacted with who I think are really going to have a phenomenal 2018, because again, they are focused on making content. They aren't focused on trying to make the most money possible out of this entire thing. And I think that is the most important thing of being a content creator here on YouTube is you make videos because it's your passion. That is what you need to get started on YouTube. If you do not have that, you really, this isn't the platform for you. Having a unique and fresh perspective that you can bring to the table on YouTube is vital to your success here. But let's, let's be real, nothing practically changed. You, as if you're under 1,000 subs and you're under 4,000 watch hours, you weren't getting paid anyways. That's the honest reality. What changed is a theoretical representation of how much money you think you're supposed to be making. It went from, I have the potential to earn unlimited, to I have to get approved first before I can make any money. YouTube is just doing this as a way to prevent people who are doing extremist and copycat content from having a platform that earns them money to give them incentive to continue to do it. And I understand the frustration when you look at this and you say, why is this coming now after the Logan Paul situation? Honestly, the Logan Paul situation is completely different than what they're addressing right now. They've addressed Logan Paul by changing the partner program for people in the top 1% of creators. So his, his changes don't affect the smaller creators at all. It doesn't affect us, at least it shouldn't. Uh, we haven't seen how YouTube might overcorrect here. But honestly, even with the demonetization, you can still make money on YouTube without AdSense. There's still Patreon for people who want to support you directly. A dollar from one person is basically worth them watching a thousand of your videos. We haven't even put out a thousand videos in the two and a half years that we've been doing this. So one person donating a single dollar to us is worth more than them watching all of our videos. Then there's selling merch. If people are interested in you and your, you as a community, then you can absolutely do that. Then there's donations. The small streamers in South Africa who don't have a thousand subscribers probably aren't at a real loss because Streamlabs is still an option. You can still earn earn donations through PayPal. There's still a way to monetize just outside of getting ads on, on videos. That wasn't a significant source of revenue here at the UFT Tech Channel until August. Until August, like less than six months ago, we weren't making enough off of AdSense to even matter. And I think that's where you smaller creators need to focus. And I think that's part of our success here. We have lost a lot of people along the way, but those who, we've really struck a chord with watch our videos for longer, thus allowing us to get more watch time, which is what you need. Once you build a community of people who actually care about your videos, those milestones really don't become an issue anymore. You have people who care about you, who are invested in you, who are invested in your channel, and then you're going to be able to grow. Obviously, I get it. There's a lot of frustration surrounding this situation. YouTube, as always, is not great at communicating what the heck is going on. I mean, I am still incredibly frustrated when they demonetize our videos. I, I understand the frustration in principle. I rage at the wind with YouTube complaining on Twitter all the time, just like you guys do. YouTube sucks at communication. That is the honest truth. However, I, I really think that in practicality, you're not losing money as a small creator through this change. All you're learning is how to build an audience. All you're learning is that your content is more important than the money. And those are the lessons that are the most important ones to learn here on YouTube. Once you solidify those, then you're able to build a great channel. Once you realize that the content that you put out and the people that it's reaching are more important than anything else, that's when you're gonna be able to grow and that's when you're gonna reach people, impact their lives and change things for the better. This is me just talking off the top of my head. This is something that I have really been, um, this is something that I've seen in the small creator community because I'm still very much active with small creators. Just because we've grown doesn't mean that I somehow will stop caring about the people who have gotten me to this point and the people who have inspired me, whether they're big or small, like, I, I care about content creators, whether they have 300 subs, 3,000 subs, or 3 million. I will interact with them all the same. I think I'm just gonna end it on that note. I, again, I sympathize with the loss of income. I sympathize with the idea of having money pulled away as a motivation. 
But truth be told, if you're doing it for the right reasons, YouTube is a great place to still be. YouTube is where we're gonna be hosting our content going forward. YouTube provides the best platform for us to reach as many people as we possibly can. And if you are producing content that is unique, that's where you wanna be. And I think that we'll, we'll be here on YouTube for the foreseeable future, unless they keep demonetizing all of our videos. Buttheads. Anyways, uh, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.